Can you say to the person beside you, in the eyes of God, you're always beautiful because Jesus has made you beautiful by His blood. Amen? Can you say this also to the person beside you? Regardless of how you see yourself, regardless of how others see you, in the eyes of Jesus Christ, He saw you worth dying for. Amen. Women of Honor is a title that reminds us that uh, God has given us honor in Christ. For those of you who are familiar with the gospel story of the prodigal son, how many of you remember the story of the prodigal son? Yes, in the gospels, you will see how the father responded when the son came back. And before the, the son can finish his memorized confession, the father was all over him, embracing him, and restoring his honor as a son by giving him the ring, the robe, and the sandals for his feet. God wants to restore honor to all of us. Women of Honor is an empowering and restoring movement for women. We recognize that many women suffer from different kinds of emotional crisis, emotional pain. And most of the time, how they see themselves are affected by the kind of relationships that people have with them, especially their spouses, their families, and those close to them. And because women are predominantly relational beings by divine design, can you say to the person beside you, we're deeply relational. Okay? God created women to reflect the relational dimension of God, the relational nature of God. God created a man to reflect the performance nature of God. That in Genesis chapter 1, God created in six days, he worked for six days to meet the needs of creation. He created the man to reflect that side of him. But in chapter 2 of Genesis, God is a very intimate God, a God who wants fellowship with a man. That relational nature of God is reflected in the woman. That's why women are more interested in relationships than they are with performance matters, right? So when women talk together, they usually talk about the people that matter to them, right? <laughs> when men talk, they talk about sports, they talk about, you know, uh, politics, they talk about events, they talk about performance topics. Well, women, when they gather together, they talk about relational topics. They talk about their spouse, their children, their in-laws, you know, the, their friends, you know, their colleagues in the, at work, their relationship, you know, with their superiors at work, and their struggles in those relationships, right? That's why when men watch movies, they prefer what? Action. When women watch movies, they prefer what? Drama. <laughs> because drama is, uh, reveals the dynamics of human relationships, love, intrigue, etc. Okay? So, because women are deeply relational, you're also deeply emotional because you cannot enjoy real relationship if there is no experience of emotional security in that relationship. That's why men are more interested in achieving, in success, while women are more interested in relationship. Do you agree? That's why ang mga lalaki naghahanap ng success, ang mga babae naghahanap ng attention. I would just like to share with you a, a portion of the Psalms, and I hope you can identify, if you're going through some kind of emotional pain at the moment, you may find yourself identifying with the Psalmist as we bring to you Psalm 31. I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, and, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from all human intrigues. 
You keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. For my Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. You notice how the psalm journeys from emotional pain to rejoicing in the Lord, right? How many of you read the book of, from the book of Psalms? Okay. You know, the book of Psalms contains the complete range of human emotions in our human nature. Any kind of emotion, you can find the right psalm that fits that emotional experience in your life. And the reason why God gave us the book of Psalms so that it would be an avenue for us to express our emotions to God and guide us into understanding how we should respond to those situations that cause us a lot of pain in life. And you know, when you read the book of Psalms, not only do you find that you're not alone, because the psalmist is voicing what your heart is saying, but at the same time, the psalmist is leading you to trust in God and to recognize where, why these things are happening to you and what God wants to do for you. That's why the book of Psalms has been the best, uh, you know, place to go whenever you're going through a lot of disappointments, hurts, and pains. Amen? I would encourage you as women of honor to take time to read the book of Psalms every day. And you'll be surprised. You'll find the Psalm that's right just for what, for what you're going through emotionally. So tonight, our special topic is healing damaged emotions. Resto the restoring power of faith and forgiveness. Can we say this? Faith and forgiveness. Okay. When do women experience damaged emotions? Usually it's the result, number one, of betrayal. Amen? Whether you're married or meron kang love relationship, I'm sure some of you here have experienced betrayal, right? There is nothing more traumatic for a woman more than any experience in life, there's nothing more traumatic for a woman than to be betrayed by someone that she loves. Is that true? Because women are deeply relational by divine design. Betrayal, you know, just violates the nature of a woman as a relational being. Because you put so much of your trust in the person, right? So whether boyfriend mo siya or asawa mo, pag nabetray ka, talagang it leaves a deep tear talagang pupunitin talagang kaluluwa mo niyan it's like may nakadikit sa'yo tapos biglang tinanggal and it causes damage that is why betrayal of all human experiences is the most traumatic the most painful for a woman to experience and if you have experienced that and you have not yet moved on you have not yet gone over that experience I thank God that you're here tonight because God brought you here for a reason Amen so betrayal so I'm not, I'm, going to, I'm not going to ask you who of you have experienced betrayal here because I will not be surprised if there will be many hands that will be going up. Okay? Another cause of damaged emotions is experiencing a major disappointment in life. Like you're planning to get that high-paying job and then suddenly it was given to another. Or you wanted to go to this country and then the embassy denied you your visa. You know? Or you had dreams, you know, of being with family, being with people, and then something happens, the plan doesn't push through. So how many of you, I, I think I can ask this one, how many of you have gone through a major disappointment in life? At least I'm not going to specify betrayal. <laughs> Amen? Okay. A major disappointment in life. Why? Because there is expectation, and the expectation is not fulfilled. And that leaves a hole in your soul. That's why there's a lot, the pain sometimes is not easy to get over. I remember my daughter, uh, there was, she had plans to study abroad, one of my daughters. And uh, she was accepted by the school. I mean, there were endorsement letters coming from the university, and this was in Hawaii, okay? And uh, we were all expecting that she'll go. So the last thing was the embassy interview, U.S. Embassy. 
And so we were all expecting that she would be approved because there were endorsements from the school, you know, and uh, they already have given their letter to the embassy telling them that she's very much qualified to join our university. And voila, what happens? She was denied. It was so crushing for my daughter, it took her a year to recover. A major disappointment. How many of you are still trying to recover from a major disappointment? Can you raise your hands, please. Okay, thank you so much for sharing your, being honest about it. You're here for a reason. Another uh, cause of damaged emotions are verbal or emotional abuse, particularly in the marriage or through your upbringing, the years of your upbringing. Some of us may have grown up in families where you have been verbally abused by parents or those in authority and that somehow gave you a low view of yourself, made you look down on yourself. And it could have caused you to have rebelled. Some of you may have actually rebelled already against your parents for all those abusive languages. And if you have gone through a lot of verbal and emotional abuse, it damages how you see yourself. That's how you become very insecure, especially when people criticize you. It's not easy for you to take criticism because you have experienced that for so many years already has brought damage to you, okay? That's why if you have gone through a lot of verbal emotional abuse, you experience damaged emotions. Another thing that causes damaged emotions are deep feelings of guilt, regret, humiliation, or shame. Can you say to the person beside you, we are not perfect. We can make mistakes, right? And even though we're not perfect, we can become better and better by the grace of God. Amen? So a failure, a mistake, a major failure or mistake in your life doesn't mean that that failure and mistake defines you. Failures and mistakes do not define you. They only serve to define where you need to change and improve. You understand that? What defines you are the choices you make after you make the mistake. Okay? Can we say that together? Failures or mistakes do not define me. They only show me where I can change and improve. What defines me are the choices I make after a failure or mistake. You understand that? Okay? So don't allow yourself to wallow in feelings of regret or humiliation, especially if you made a mistake that caused you a lot of embarrassment because it was public, okay? Or you have gone through an experience where you left you feeling guilty and you don't know how to get out of that guilt, okay? Or you have experienced real shame because somebody shamed you because of something wrong you have done. This creates a lot of damage in the emotion, a tear in the soul. And so, how do you get over guilt, humiliation, and shame? Of course, the first thing you can do and what God expects us to do is to come to Him and confess to Him what you have done because God is always ready to forgive you. And there is no, nothing you can ever do that can remove God's love for you. And there is no sin, no mistake, no failure in life that God cannot forgive because Jesus Christ already gave His life on the cross to ensure that all our sins will be forgiven. Do you understand that? Amen? So deep feelings of humiliation, guilt, regret, or shame. Another cause for damaged emotions is long-term bitterness. If you have had, you know, an experience in the past that was really painful for you, it may be a betrayal, you have been verbally abused in the past, it creates in you a deep sense of bitterness that you carry through the years, okay? So if you have been carrying a lot of bitterness in your life, it will affect your attitude. It will affect your perspective in life. You will tend to be negative about people. You will be, tend to be negative about life. And you will tend to find it hard to forgive people who hurt you. Why? Because the bitterness has been there. And we will talk more about that in a little while. So when there is long-term bitterness, it brings a lot of emotional damage. Okay? Another is long-term self-contempt, self-hatred. Okay? How many of you tend to just hate yourself every time you commit a mistake or commit a failure that really embarrassed you? Okay, let's be honest. How many of you tend to hate yourself? Okay? And sometimes, you know, imagining punishing yourself 
for what you have done. Okay? You know, that self-hatred is drawn from your past experience with authority figures who made you feel rejected or condemned everything, every time you did something wrong. So when you commit, you do a, commit a mistake or you do something wrong, you, you know, tumatakbo yung sirang plaka ng nakaraan. And you begin to hate yourself for not, you know, not doing right, for failing expectations. And you begin to project that hatred towards you. That just adds to the damage in you. Okay? So if you're suffering from self-contempt, God brought you here for a reason. Amen? Another is the sudden loss of a loved one by death or abandonment. How many of you have suffered, are still recovering from deep emotional pain because of sudden loss of a loved one, either namatay na or iniwanan ka? Yan, po tayo mahiya kasi marami po yan. Okay, thank you so much for being honest, okay? The Lord brought you here for a reason. Amen? Let's take a look at what, you know, makes recovery from these damaged emotions more difficult. What aggravates damaged emotions? Number one, we tend to blame ourselves too much, right? Sometimes a, a death of a loved one or being abandoned or a failure in marriage or even a major disappointment in life, we, you know, I've noticed this. Women of all people are the ones who are always, always have a tendency to blame themselves, right? How many of you tend to blame yourself? A lot, okay? Especially when your husband or your boyfriend, you know, shows you know, you know, parang um, some kind of feeling of dissatisfaction with you, right? You tend to, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me, right? We tend to blame ourselves. Remember this. I want you to remember this. What people think about you does not always define you. It defines them. It defines their attitudes, their character. It, uh, it defines their values, their standards, but it does not define you. Remember, what defines you are the choices you make, okay, that make you what you are supposed to be. You have to make choices that will help you become a better person. That's what defines you. But what people think about you does not always define you. Some of the things that they say about you may be true of you, but when they say it in a, in a negative way, they say, medyo mean ang pakasabi. Medyo masakit ang pakasabi. Usually, pag offensive na ang dating ng criticism, usually exaggeration na yun. Okay? That's why don't take everything that people say about you, especially when it's negative, because not all of that is true about you. Some of them will be exaggerations. Because they don't know your heart, they don't know your circumstances, they don't know what you're going through. So whatever judgments they make about you will never be 100% accurate unless it is coming from somebody who knows you so much and knows what you're going through. You understand this? That's why we should stop blaming ourselves because we can still make choices that can change the situation. Amen? Okay. So, blaming oneself for the sudden, for a breakup in a love relationship. Okay? Sino po sa inyo mga nadalaga rito pagkitaas ang kamay? Who are the singles here? Okay. If you experience a breakup with a boyfriend and uh, you, you did not want that to happen, okay? Kaya ka nag-break up kasi may, nakita mo meron na siyang ibang nililigawan. Okay? So, na-betrayed ka na. So, siyempre ang sama sa law, gusto mo na magipag-break sa kanya. Tama? Okay? And then usually after the breakup, a woman tends to find, what's wrong with me? Ano bang meron siya, yung babaeng yun, na wala ako? Ano bang kasalanan ko? <laughs> Hindi ba? Okay? Blaming yourself is not going to solve your situation. Okay? Uh, that's always our tendency. But remember this, what people do to you do not define you, it defines them. You understand that? Because una-una, it only shows na they don't understand what love is all about. Okay? Because real love is unconditional. Real love forgives. So, kung iniwanan ka ng isang lalaki, whether asawa or boyfriend, that defines who he is. Doesn't define you. You understand that? That means, hindi, talaga, hindi kanya talaga mahal. Pasalamat ka Diyos, maaga pa lang, nalaman mo na. Kesa naman, asawa, pakasal kayo, tapos dito rong iiwanan ka pala. Ay, mas masakit yun. Amen? That's why if you are, you know, a single woman and 
you know, your boyfriend, you know, went for another girl, uh, beside, uh, you know, at iniwanan ka, you know, remember this, nagpasalamat ka sa Diyos, sa maaga pa lang, hiniwalay ka na sa lalaking yun. Ganun pala siya. Hindi pala siya, niya kaya maging tapat sa kanyang pangako sa iyo. Do you understand this? Okay? So, but the worst happens is when, if ever you have made a major mistake of giving yourself physically to that boy, and nun, nakuha niya na yung gusto niya sa iyo, nagsawa na, iniwanan ka na. Medyo mabigat talaga ang self-blaming dyan. Mabigat talaga ang self-blaming, right? But listen to this. Today, you're going to learn what it means to forgive yourself. Nobody's perfect. But it doesn't mean that just because you made a major mistake, it doesn't mean that's the end of your story. That can just be a beginning of a new experience of God's love and grace in your life. And God can bring out something beautiful out of the ugliest mistakes we have made in the past. It is God's invitation for you to come to Him and allow Him to show you what He can do for you. Amen? Can you say to the person beside you, God can bring out the most beautiful things from our ugliest decisions in life. Amen? We will see that more as we go along. Another mistake that we make when we go through these damaged emotions is that we start blaming others and blaming God. Okay? It's always good. Remember this. When you make a mistake, don't allow that to define you. It's just showing you where you need to improve. Do you understand that? What defines you is what you choose to become, but not that mistake. So choose to learn from that. If you blame others for what happened, and you may have a part in what happened, you will never learn anything that will help you improve as a person. So ask yourself, God, ang sakit nito. What are, what are you teaching me? What are you teaching me in this experience? I surrender my life to you, Lord. Change me where I need to change. But I don't blame myself because I am not perfect. Nobody is. But I am a work in progress. And I know, Lord, you will finish the work that you have done in my life. Can you say to the person beside you, I am a work in progress. I am not finished yet. So I have no right to finish something that's not finished. So don't condemn yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't put yourself down because everybody makes mistakes. Amen? You're not an exemption. You're not a perfect person. And the people who struggle most, you know, in dealing with failures and mistakes are the artistic type of personalities. Sino sa inyo rito ang mga artistic people? Deeply artistic. Yan, okay. Mas matindi ang struggle ng mga artistic ng tao pag humarap sila sa pagkakamali, failure, because they tend to be perfectionist. Okay? And the tendency to be perfectionist, sometimes they all apply, also apply to themselves. Kaya hindi na matanggap pag nagkamali sila. Ang sakit talaga. They, they are not able to get over it. In order to, to, to uh, you call that, to compensate for that, they try to find somebody to blame. Okay? Para lang medyo mabawasan ba yung bigat. <laughs> okay? So, why? Because hindi matanggap na nang kamali ako. Pagkasabi sa inyong katabi, you will still make mistakes. Because you're not yet perfect. You're a work in progress. You're a, God, a masterpiece of God. Still in the making. So don't worry. God will finish His work one day. You just need to be patient. Amen? So instead of trying to blame somebody, find out what you can learn from your mistake and accept the fact that you're not yet a finished product. You're still a work in progress and one day you'll become that kind of person that you'll be very happy when God says to you, I am pleased with you. Right? But even now, when you have Jesus Christ in your life, God is already pleased with you. Because Jesus Christ in you is the one that cleanses you from all your sins, making you forever acceptable to God. It is Jesus' blood that made you acceptable to the Father forever. Do you understand this? Can you say to the person beside you, you have no right 
to reject someone that God has already accepted. You have no right to say that you are unworthy when Jesus made you worthy by His blood. Amen? Can you say to the person beside you, when you come to God through Christ, God will always accept you because Jesus makes you worthy all the time. Amen? So, instead of blaming others, learn from your mistakes and don't blame God. Well, sometimes we get, really get tempted to blame God because, you know, if God is in control, why did He allow this to happen to me? And why me? Why not that person? He's even worse than I am. Diba? Kumisan, nagsiselos ka, but Lord, itong taong itong napakasama. Blessed na blessed. Ako itong, ano, parang hirap-hirap <laughs> ako. Diba? Okay? Kaya pag may samang nangyari sa iyo, nakaroon ka ng major disappointment in life, oh God, bakit mo ito ginawa sa akin? Okay, remember this. There are some negative experiences in life that come as a consequences of wrong decisions we have made in the past. And you cannot blame God for those things. Okay? There are also negative experiences in life that happen to us that are the result of the wrong decisions of others towards us. Okay? Hindi naman ang Diyos nagsabi sa kanila, gawin mo yan sa kanya, ha? No, they are using their human freedom to make choices. We live in a fallen world. We live among imperfect people. Right? Can you say to the person beside you, we live in a fallen world. Hurts should not be a surprise but should be expected because people are not perfect. Okay? So, yung mga artists dyan, please ask God to give you the grace to accept that life can be beautiful even when it's not perfect. And people don't need to be perfect to be respected. Why? Because if that is true, then nobody is worthy of respect because nobody is perfect. You understand that? So, instead of blaming God, Ask yourself, God will not allow me to go through this experience if not for a reason. And that is usually to change something in me so I can become a better person. Okay? And you ask the question, God, what are you teaching me? I know you would not allow this to happen to me if there is no good reason. And I want, Lord, as I'm asking, what is it that you're teaching me in this experience? Amen? That's why if you keep blaming others or blaming God, instead of processing your experience and finding how that experience can make you a better person, you will never be able to get over those damaged emotions. You understand that? Can you say to the person beside you, so long as you blame yourself unnecessarily, as you as you blame others or blame God, it will be hard for you to move on from those damaged emotions. Accept what happened and ask God, Lord, I want to know what I can learn from this experience so I can make better decisions and I can become a better person. Okay? Another, incapable or refusal to forgive. Oh, this really makes it worse. Especially when you feel hurt or disappointed because of what somebody did to you. Right? If you are able or you refuse to forgive, you're going to make it very difficult for you to recover from that damaged emotion. Okay? In fact, we'll be focusing on this tonight in a little while. Forgiveness. Another reason, living in the painful memories of the past. You know, whether we like it or not, painful memories, you know, will always be there. But it is a matter of choice whether you will keep focusing on them or choose to move on from those memories. Do you understand that? Okay? So, ang, nakaka, nakaka, ang ironic po sa human nature, kahit masakit po yung karanasan, pero we tend to cherish those painful memories, right? Kasi we keep recalling them. Every time you recall and you dwell on the memory, you know, the pain, yun, yung sukat, imbis na gumagaling, you know, natatamaan na naman, kasi nire-recall mo eh. Tapos pinag-uusapan pa, kinekwento pa sa iba, alam mo mari, yung ginawa ni ano, ganyan-ganyan. So, kaka-focus mo doon sa painful memory, eh, lalong, mag that will stop you from moving on and getting healed from that damaged emotion because you're still dwelling in the past. Okay? I call that our cherished 
uh, our cherries uh, hurts. <laughs> okay, with, you know, I noticed that with, with women, women tend to uh, spend a lot of time recalling what happened. Right? Right? And then talking about it. It's talking about it somehow helps you get it out of your system. Women need to ventilate. Because women are predominantly relational beings, they, they're able to cope up with uh, stressful emotions by sharing it with another verbally. Ang tawag dyan, ang bisaya word? Iyaw yaw mo, sis. Ilabas talaga. Okay. Pero it brings, uh, it brings a sense of relief when you share your pain with another person because now you feel you're not alone anymore. You understand this? So women will always ventilate as a way of coping up with their uh, hung-up emotions. But let me tell you this. But please make a decision that one day, hindi mo na ikikwento yan. Okay? Don't keep bringing up the past. Personally, in your mind, pag naalala mo, ano ko, i-meditate mo na naman yung nangyari. I-review na, i-rewind. Ang gitawa niya, ganyan. O kaya, pag may nagbukas ng topic, ay, ay mahari, oo nga eh. Alam mo, <laughs> under, rewind na. <laughs> okay? But, even though it helps you get it off your system, but it just keeps you focused on the pain. You understand that? If you cannot, if you cannot, uh, stop living in the painful memories of the past, you cannot really be healed of those damaged emotions. You have to choose to move on. And we'll see how that will happen, how we can do that, okay? And that's it. it you know, if you keep living in the past, it gives you the inability to move on. It's hard to move on if you live in the past, okay? So how do we deal with these damaged emotions? Are you ready? Okay? Number one, First answer is faith. Why faith? Okay? The Word of God shows us that God is sovereign. Come and say sovereign. That means He is in control of everything that happens to you. And when He is in control, whatever happens, He is allowing that or using that to fulfill a plan and a purpose in your life. And secondly, that God does love you. Okay? And God works in ways many times that we don't agree. Do you agree? <laughs> God often works in ways that we do not agree, okay? But the problem is that because of our limited human understanding, we tend to make judgments about God's, what God allows us to experience and say that, God, you are so wrong in doing this. Uh, Lord, this is unfair. This is so wrong, you know? And when, the moment we make judgments, that's when the pain starts. But when you have faith in God and say, God, I don't understand why you're allowing this to happen, it hurts, it hurts a lot, Father. Okay? So it hurts. But you say, Father, I know you love me. And I will choose not to doubt that you love me. And I know something good is going to come out of this. So I'm going to trust you even when it hurts. Because I know that you love me. If you don't recognize that God loves you, then you will tend to make conclusions that it is the will of God for you to suffer. That God doesn't love you. Once you entertain those thoughts that God doesn't love you because of what you're going through, the more you will not be able to recover from your pain. Because you're looking at it from the wrong perspective. It is not the perspective of faith. So what does it mean when we say that God is sovereign? Okay? It means that God is in control of all things and He is controlling everything to carry out His purposes and plans for your life, including the negative experiences of life. How many of you are born, you know, in a family that you wish was not your family? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your honesty. Sometimes we wish, I wish I was born in a rich family. I wish I was not, I wish I was not born in a broken home. I wish I was not sexually molested by my father. 
I had a bad father in a sense that, you know, he, he molested me when I was a child. If you're thinking about that, and you're saying, does God really love me? Why did he allow me to be born this way? Okay? So those are questions that oftentimes keep us from believing that God loves us. Let me share with you Ephesians 1.11, New Living Translation. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. Okay? Whatever painful experience you have gone through, if you choose to trust in God, God wants you to know that He is working out a beautiful plan in the midst of that painful experience. You may not understand now, but later, in God's time, you will understand why God allowed it to happen. Okay? I was born in a family that was not perfect. It was late in my teenage years I discovered that my father committed adultery. And that broke us. That broke us as the children. And we learned that we have a sibling, a sister outside the family. We have never met that sister. My father was a very good man. A hard worker, a humble person, and loves us a lot. But to know that my father betrayed our mother was very traumatic, painful for us. Okay? And when I was a child, I went through a lot of, you call this, uh, experiences of rejection because of the way that was brought up, okay, by my mother. Spanish style discipline. <laughs> yeah. So, I also had experiences I cannot forget because these experiences somehow brought shame to me when I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, I was sexually molested by my uncle. An uncle sexually molested me when I was still a little kid. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you to know that if you've been sexually molested while you were still a child, do not look down on yourself because that is not your fault. You were not the one who chose that. Somebody did that to you and used you. Do you understand this? Okay? It does not define who you are. It defines the person who did that to you. So that should not, you should not allow yourself to live in shame over something you are not fully responsible for. Are you still here? Kaya hindi po ako nahihiya na sabihin sa iyo na ako was sexually molested when I was a kid because I was not responsible for that. That was an evil that was done to me. It did affect me. But praise to the Lord Jesus Christ, He transformed my life. Are you still here? Okay? Usually those of you who have gone through sexual molestation and you are a child, you will struggle with lust. You will be struggling with lust all throughout your years. And if, that, if you do not experience the transforming power of Jesus Christ, it can bring you to a lot of wrong decisions in your life that can really make a mess of your life. The seed was planted into you by somebody that the enemy used to try to corrupt and destroy you. But in the eyes of God, in the eyes of God, He loves you. And He knows that was not your fault. You understand this? I'm sharing this because in my counseling experience for the last 35, 36 years now, I've encountered women in counseling who have gone through sexual molestation from their own fathers, uncles, or even from a teacher in the school. And you not, should not be afraid to share that with a counselor because you need help. It should not affect how you see yourself because in the first place, that was not your choice. Are you still here? 
Okay? So I'm sharing this just to encourage you that there's always hope in Christ that whatever damage was done to you and you're still a child, God can bring something beautiful out of that because He works everything out according to His plan. Are you still here? If you grew up in a family, broken home, abusive parents, whatever you've gone through, remember this. Those were choices made by people. Those were choices made by your parents or the people who did that to you. That was not your choice. And listen to this. It was not also God's direct choice for them to do that to you. But God allowed it to happen because He included it in His plan for your life. A beautiful plan that He has set apart for you. Do you understand this? Okay? Can you show the next verse? Daniel 4.35 all the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? God can do anything he pleases, but whatever God does, he always does it according to a plan. You understand that? Can we say this together? Whatever God does, he does it according to a plan. And that plan is good okay he works out everything according to his plans in jeremiah 29 11 to 13 here's where you see the sovereignty of god how many of you know this verse praise god now i know what you have gone through <laughs> this is a favorite verse of many women because it reminds you that no matter what worst things happen to you, you know God has plans, right? Do you know the background of this message? Jeremiah was commanded by God to give this message to Israel in their most tragic time in their history. Their nation was destroyed by the Babylonians, the ancient Iraqis. Their temple was destroyed, their city was destroyed. And many of them who survived the invasion were taken off to the provinces of Iraq or Babylonia and separated them from their homeland. They became exiles in a foreign land. They lost their not identity as a people they lost their national identity they are no longer a nation but scattered peoples among the uh, nations of the Middle East and many of them were asking God you have abandoned us do we still have a future why have you allowed this to happen to us of course the prophets I've been telling them in advance before that unless they repent of their rebellion against God, God will bring this to them. But the problem is that Israel did not listen to God. They were stubborn in their rebellion against God. And so God finally carried out what He warned them about. He brought the Babylonians to destroy their nation. Okay? In other words, they don't have to ask, why did you allow this to happen to us? Because they know now why. But the question was, do we still have a future? Are we forever going to stay in this evil situation? Do we have hope? That was the question that was in the minds of many of these Jews. And so God sent Jeremiah and he said to Jeremiah, Say this to my people in exile. Say this to my people who are now under judgment. Even though you have experienced a major tragedy in your life, I allowed it to happen. And I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. 
not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I am allowing this to happen to teach you important lessons that you must learn. And as you build your lives on those lessons, I will bring you to the time when I will prosper you. I am preparing you for greater plans by humbling you, by humbling you, and bringing you to repentance. As a father loves his son, so he will discipline him. Dal mahal kita, hindi disiplina kita. I'm humbling you, and if you humble yourself, and you seek me, you will see what I'm about to do. Because my plans are to prosper you. My plans are to give you hope and a future. Do you understand this? So even in your darkest moments, when you begin to ask, may pag-asa pa ba ako? May kinabukasan pa ba ako? God's word is coming to you and saying, Yes, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans not to harm you. This experience you're going through right now may hurt you. But if you will allow it to change you, to humble you, it's preparing you for greater things to come that I am preparing for you. Do you understand this? Can you say to the person beside you, when bad things happen to God's people, you know that something good is about to happen. Okay? Every time God allows you to go through a painful experience, God is humbling you and putting you in your rightful place, which is at His feet. To make you recognize that without Him, you are nothing. To make you recognize that without Him, there is no real security in life apart from God. That apart from God, there is no real success nor satisfaction in life. God is bringing you to the place where He wants you to encounter Him as the source of everything you've been looking for. And what ultimately led you to your disappointment. Do you understand this? God knows His plans for your life. Can you trust God that He knows His plans for you? Amen? And so when you go through these negative experiences, God is actually preparing you with the right qualities that you need to develop to qualify you for the destiny He is preparing for you. Amen? Every painful experience is a destiny-shaping event in your life. Every painful experience is a turning point of God in your life to redirect you towards His plans. Kaya kuminsan, masyado tayong mainit sa isang bagay and then God removes it. He dashes your hopes to the ground. Yung ina-expect mo biglang nawala na parang bula. Masyado kang mainit doon. Kaya galit na galit ka no hindi nangyari yung gusto mo mangyari. Tama? When that happens, listen to this, God is about to transition you. He's saying, you are not in the right direction. I am redirecting you towards my plans. Do you understand this? Because God is sovereign. He controls everything. He gives you the freedom to make choices, but you must also be ready to face the consequences when you make wrong choices. And God will allow you to face consequences of wrong choices you make because God wants to change you. He wants to humble you and qualify you for His perfect plans for your life. Amen? That is why, look at the next verse, 12. In those times of painful experience, then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Wala ka na ibang pupuntahan eh, sa totoo lang. Diba? 
When you hit the ground, when you're down in the valley, and that's where God put you, there's nowhere else to look to except up. And that's exactly what God wants. He allows you to go through that painful experience so that you may encounter Him. Because if you really want to survive that experience, you will seek God. And God is saying, I have been waiting for you. I have been waiting for you. Then you will come to me and pray to me. And I promise you, because I was the one who brought you where you are, you will come to me. I will listen to you. Because this is what I've been waiting for. I want your heart to turn to me completely. I want your heart to look to me because I am the source of everything that you need and you want. And I want you to know me. That's why I brought you there. I want you to know me. I will listen to you. And listen to this. Next verse. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Siguro yung boyfriend mo. You're seeking your boyfriend with all your heart. Kaya tinanggal ng Diyos eh. <laughs> Ako ang source, hindi yung boyfriend mo. Your boyfriend can never give you all the love you're looking for. I'm trying to save you. I am the only one who can give you all the love you're looking for. Do you understand this? When the Word of God says that God is the source, He alone can answer your deepest needs and longings. No human love can satisfy you there. Only God. You understand that? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all. You will find God when you seek Him with all your heart. Next verse. And here's his promise. When you seek God, next verse, verse 14, I will be found by you and I'll bring you back from captivity, which means I will restore you. Wow, okay? So God allows you to go through a painful experience to humble you so that you will seek him with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, he said, I will restore what has been taken away from you. To let you know, I am the source. The source of everything you're looking for. God wants you to encounter Him. God wants you to know that He is God. It's not your boyfriend. It's not your husband. It's not your bank account. He is your God. You understand this? When you begin to see God as sovereign, a God of wisdom and a God who always works out all things for good. It brings comfort. It enables you to go through a process of healing. Romans 8.28, you know this, right? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him who have been called according to His purpose. Amen? So, Paul wrote this after talking about the sufferings of this life in the preceding verses. So the context of verse 28 is about the sufferings of this life that it talks about in the preceding verses, okay? So he say, in all these sufferings of life, God is at work. Can we say that together? In all my painful experiences, God is at work for good. One more time. In all my painful experiences, God is at work for my good. Amen? So you can say something good is going to happen. When you have that positive attitude of faith, it enables you to recover from those damaged emotions. Because now you have hope. Now you're beginning to understand that God is just preparing me for his greater things that he has restored for me. By allowing me to go through this experience, He's redirecting my life towards Him so that I will move in the direction that He has prepared for my life. Are you still here? That brings you a lot of comfort and assurance. Amen? Faith. 
who have been called according to His purpose. In other words, everything that God is allowing to happen in your life is meant for your good and it's fulfilling a purpose. Can you say purpose? Say it with me. I was called by God to fulfill His purpose for my life. And what is that purpose that God is fulfilling in the midst of the sufferings of life? Next verse. For those whom He foreknew. Verse 29. For those, for means because. Because those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. In other words, the Word of God is saying, God is allowing you to go through this experience because He wants to change you. He wants you to develop those qualities that you make you like Jesus Christ. You understand this? When you change in the midst of your painful experience, when your heart begins to change towards an attitude of faith, when your heart changes to an attitude of humility, when your heart changes with an attitude of confidence in God's promises, then you are able now to overcome your experience. You understand that? When faith is not there, your painful experience will overwhelm you. Para bang sa dagat, nalulunod ka sa dagat, pero ang kamay ng Diyos nakaganyan lagi sa iyo. Faith is the hand that grabs the hand of God. And when that happens, it brings you out of the depths. And in the process, God is changing something in you. It, an attitude is being changed. A perspective is being changed. And something in your character is being changed. Something about your relationship with people is being changed. And when you allow God to change you and you choose to change, then you're able to overcome your situation. Are you still here? Can you say to the person beside you, it is when we change that we overcome. Amen? And that's what God is doing. Okay. Next. Ecclesiastes 3.1. I'm sure you love this also. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven. Okay? If you're going through a time of pain, that's only a season. Can we say that? That's only a season. You won't stay there forever unless you choose to do so because of a negative attitude. Okay? Once you change your attitude towards an attitude of faith in God, you're able to move on from that experience. Okay? Seasons will come to your life. Hindi all the time, ang buhay natin masaya. May time na darating ang pagsubok. It is part of God's cycle of seasons in your life. But through the seasons of life, God continues to change you. Because by changing you, He is preparing you for the greater purposes that He has in store for your life. And as you change, God leads you to higher ground in your experience of God and the experience of His blessings in your life. You will experience more of the favor of God in your life if you show to God that no matter what happens, I will trust in you. I will be faithful to you. And that faithfulness will be richly rewarded in time. Do you understand this? Because God wants to change us. A time and season for everything. How many of you are going through a season of refreshing at this time of your life? Life is so good to you right now. Come on. How many of you are going through a season of good things in life? Very good. Never stop thanking God for that good season. How many of you are going through a season of pain and disappointment right now? Okay. Pakisabi sa yung katabi, makakaraos ka rin dyan. <laughs> Lilipas din yan. Okay. Can you show the next verses? You see? The seasons of God... There's a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, okay? A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build. These are opposite experiences of life, right? 
God, the Word of God is saying, you're going through the opposites of life. Lahat po tayo dumadaan sa opposites. May positive seasons, may negative seasons. And why is God allowing us to go through these seasons of life? In order to humble us. Kasi pag ang season positive, madaling makalimutan ng Diyos. Di ba? Tayo mga Pilipino, pag may masamang nangyari, sinasabi natin, tanggapin natin ang kalooban ng Diyos. Kasi masakit. Pero pag, you know, a time of blessing, ay swerte. <laughs> so pag dumarating ang mga blessing, swerte. Pag masama, kalooban ng Diyos. Napakabayas naman na tingin natin sa will of God. Ay yung blessing na yun, will of God din yan sa'yo. Ang kalooban ng Diyos, kasama yung mga blessing. Kasama yung masasarap na karanasan. Kasama yung katuparan ng iyong pangarap. Ng iyong mga nais mangyari. Kasama yon sa plano ng Diyos para sa'yo. It's part of the seasons of life. Amen? But listen to this. Even if you go through a painful season right now, look at verse 11. This is the assurance. He has made everything beautiful in its time, in its season. Kung dinadaanan mo ngayon ay pangit na season, don't worry, yung season of beauty is going to come. And God is allowing this to keep us humble and moldable in His hands. You understand that? So what do you expect? Hoy, Lord, thank you. Na-release mo na ako sa problema ko. Huwag mo isipin na forever ganyan ka na lang. <laughs> Para maiwasan natin yung mga times na God feels it's necessary to bring you through a negative season, ito lang po ang payo ko sa inyo. In your positive seasons of life, never forget to thank God. Para makita niya, hindi mo siya nakakalimutan. At sumusunod ka pa rin sa kanya. Baka hindi niya na ituloy yung next season. You understand that? Because you have an attitude of faith and humility before God. You understand this? Okay? So, He will make all things beautiful in its proper time. So don't worry. You lost a love. Now, you may find the best one soon. Amen? Your husband abandoned you. You'll find your children rise up to be mighty in the land because hindi mo sila pinabayaan. Do you understand that? Okay? A good season is always coming. Why faith? Next slide. God allows evil to humble us. There are three things that God does when He allows painful experiences to happen. To humble us, to draw us back to Him, and to change us in preparation for His unique plans for our lives. So can you re remember those three things that God is doing in the midst of your painful experiences? Number one, to humble us. Number two, to draw us back to Him. Number three, to change us in preparation for His unique plans for our lives. Amen? Whatever disappointment you face, remember this, God ordained that for you because through that disappointment, He's preparing you for something bigger and greater than what you were expecting. I'll give you one example in my family recently. My daughter, Faye, the manager of Esther Renewal Ministries, has been a hard worker. I love my daughter, Faye. She's a hard worker, and she deserves a grand vacation for many years of serving Ezra, even without a real vacation. And so we said, Faye, we want you to uh, have a vacation in Australia with my son, Joshua. That's where my son is. So excited si Faye, wow, vacation in Australia. And so, what do you know what happened? The same thing that happened to my other daughter years ago, she was denied a visa. And so, Faye, when God closes a door, 
He opens a gate. Huwag natin sabihin, when God closes a door, He opens a window. Parang paurong ang Diyos. God is always a progressive God. When He closes a door, He opens a gate. Because God will never close a door if there's nothing better that He's preparing for you. It's not a window, it's a gate. And you know what happened to my daughter, Faye? So, hindi na to Australia, God closed the door. You know yung gate? Nakapunta siya sa Israel. <laughs> Even better place. And she was our driver in the tour. Okay, we rented a van. So, we are so free to go anywhere, all the tour sites, at our time, at our pace, do groceries, cook in our uh, rented apartment. 15 days in the Holy Land, enjoying every moment. Kasi walang pressure ng tour guide na kailangan, Hoy! Lagi ka tumatakbo pag tour eh. No? Gusto kumihin, hindi ka makahi kasi baka may iwakan ka ng tour group. Okay? Eh dito talang on our time. She really enjoyed it. And I said, that's the gate that God opened for you. Amen? Huwag niyo pong sasabing window. Baka window nga ibigay sa'yo ng Lord kasi yun ang pinapaniwalaan mo eh. According to your faith, it shall be unto you. Kaya pag sangsara ang Diyos ng door, sabi, Lord, thank you for the gate that's opening after this. I look for the gate, not the window. Okay? God is always honored when we trust in Him in the midst of painful experience. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5b to 7. Read this together with me. In the same way, you or younger submit yourself to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because... God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Next verse. And because, okay, say this, because God wants to show you favor, say it with me, because, say it to somebody, because God wants to show you favor, He will humble you first. Ibig sabihin, pag hinambol ka niya, anong susunod? Shout it. Favor. favor. Okay? So, he will humble you because He shows favor to the humble, right? Okay, look at the next verse. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, ayan, under God's mighty hand. Ayan na yung mighty hand ng Diyos pag bumaba sa'yo para ka madudurog. When God's mighty hand is upon you, that means God is humbling you. If you're going through a painful experience, that is the mighty hand of God humbling you. And the reason why He's humbling you right now is because He's preparing you for a season of favor if you humble yourself. If you humble yourself. Ang mahirap lang po, pag hinahumble ka ng Diyos at palaban, lumalaban ka, baka tuluyang ka niya. Kaya mag-ingat po tayo. Okay? Baka matuluyang ka. Binababa ka niya kasi gusto ka niyang i-bless. Amen? Masakit man yung dinaanan mo, major disappointment, God's hand is upon you and is humbling you. So humble yourself. And listen to this. If you humble yourself, what is the promise? That He may lift you up in due time. At the right season of life, He will lift you up. The same hand that humbled you is the same hand that will lift you up. Do you understand this? Amen? Kaya kayo ba thankful na kahit dumaan kayo na masasakit na karanasan sa buhay? Thankful kayo na kahit may disappointment, aba may magandang plano pala ang Lord sa akin. He's humbling me because He wants to show me favor. You understand that? And at the right time, He will lift me up in due time. And I put my faith in God. Amen? Do you understand that? So, is this, is this helping you? Praise God. James 1, 2 to 4, look at this. In the time of humbling, in times of trials and tribulations, God is doing something. We said He is changing us. Consider pure joy, brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. Why? How can you rejoice when you're hurting? Right? How can you rejoice when you're in pain? But the Word of God says, rejoice, count it joy, not because you're suffering. Labas nun, mga masukista tayo niya, no? Do not rejoice because you're suffering. You rejoice because you know. Because you know, kahit masakit yung dinadaan mo, that the testing of your faith produces patient endurance in the Greek. 
It's building character in you and that character is preparing you to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Hanggat hindi ka magbago, hindi ka magagamit ng Diyos ng gusto. He is preparing you. Okay? Look at the next verse. Pwede NLT. So let it grow. It, patient endurance. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect or mature and complete, needing nothing. Pag nasanaya tayo maging mat- magkaroon ng patient endurance, kahit anong bagyon dumating sa iyo, hindi ka natitibag. Nagbago ka na eh. Natuto ka na maging patient. Pag sabi sa katabi mo, patience lang ang kailangan mo. <laughs> Alam mo, pag wala tayong patience, nakakagawa tayo ng maling mga desisyon sa buhay. Totoo hindi. Pag sabi sa inyong katabi, patience always pays. Uh, pag kulang ka na patience, lalaki utang mo. <laughs> Kasi ang patience lang nagbabayad. Patience alone pays. Okay? You lose nothing by being patient because you trust God that He will do His part. Amen? So, when you develop patience, next time, hindi ka na naapektuhan ng mga pangyayari kasi matibay na pananaling mo sa Diyos, natuto ka na maging patient. Amen? Kaya ang gusto ng Lord, kahit ay pinapadaan sa mga disappointments because He's building patience in you. Sinasabi sa iyo, magtiwala ka lang sa akin, sisikat din ang araw mo. Okay? In my time, not yours in due time. Okay? So, God is changing us in the midst of our painful experiences. Romans 5, 3 to 4 says the same thing. Okay? Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces patient endurance. Next verse. Okay? The four. Perseverance produces character and character hope that God's purpose in us will be fulfilled in due time. Amen? So God, can you say to the person beside you, God is building you. Okay, next slide. So here's a summary statement. Evil or disappointing experiences can either be the product of our own choices, the product of the fallen world we live in, human or natural causes of our pain, or the product of direct okay, actions in accordance with the great plans He has for us. So anumang disappointment meron ka, anong pain you gone through, is either the product of your own decisions. So, pag product ng decision mo yan, huwag mo sisihin ng Diyos. Huwag mo sisihin tao. Ikaw, ikaw ang naghanda ng ganyang consequence. Because mag, uh, the best thing is to ask God's forgiveness for those wrong decisions. And trust God to restore you. Amen? Or is the product of the sins of others against you? You live in a fallen world. Or the product of direct divine actions like closing a door for you because He has... He's doing that in accordance to His plans for your life. Another thing, why, why faith? Because God loves us. He reconciled us to Himself to the death of His Son Jesus so that He can guarantee our final security and salvation. Can you say this to the person beside you? There is no real security apart from God. Amen? No real security in your marriage, in your work, in whatever you're doing right now, because security comes from God alone. As you trust in Him. Amen? And Jesus gave His life to ensure that we will be forever secure because the death of Christ saved us from the eternal destiny that we all deserve, which is to be separated from God in hell. Jesus gave His life. So now you can be reconciled to the Father and be forgiven of all your sins. Can you say to the person beside you, God forgives. Amen? There is no sin you can ever commit that God cannot forgive because Jesus died. He paid the ultimate penalty for the sin you committed so that God assures you of forgiveness. Amen? Some of you may still be living in guilt at this moment, or shame. I want you to know the full assurance of God's forgiveness for you. In 1 John 1, 9, you know this. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just enough to forgive us and cleanse us. When God cleanses you, remember this, you have no more past in His eyes when He forgives you. Do you understand that? You have no more past when God forgives you. But you have a future so bright, you need sunglasses to look at it. Because of Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus gives you hope. 
that even in the worst things you have done, God can bring something beautiful out of that. Amen? So, security is secured because God loves you. Next slide. In Christ, He promises to meet all our needs and reserve the best things for us. You can no longer go to the verses. Some of these are familiar to you. But one thing is sure, when it's a need, God is committed to meet it. But He will meet it His way, His time. Not always your way, your time. Do you understand this? Sometimes when you feel you, parang you do not have in, who of you here does not have enough income? Let's be honest. You're struggling financially. Okay, praise God. Listen to this. God is committed to meet all those needs. Right? Philippians 4, 19, And my God will supply all your needs. Not only some, all your needs. But listen to this. Ask God for wisdom to find the channels of His blessing. Ask God's wisdom. Lord, open my eyes to see where the provision will be coming. Amen? Don't stick to one source. Your job is not your only source. God is your source. If you look to your job, malilimit ka sa provision. If you look to God, He will have other ways to meet your needs. Do you understand this? But pray God, ask God for wisdom. Lord, open my eyes so I will see your channels, the avenues of your provision. Do you understand that? Okay? So God is committed. The second thing, if you want to heal from damaged emotions, faith is the first step. But the next step is forgiveness. Can we say forgiveness? So let's go back to our slide. Why forgiveness? Because time does not heal wounds. Only forgiveness does. Time only helps us forget the wounds for a while until something triggers the pain again. What brings healing is when you decide to put the memory of the offense behind you forever and you refuse to look back. When you refuse to look back, you allow the wound to heal. You understand that? You don't simply forget. You refuse to look back. And that's what forgiveness is all about. Okay, next slide. So what is forgiveness? Many people don't understand what forgiveness means. That's why they don't know if they have forgiven or not. How many of you are asking? Sometimes, napataot ko na ba siya o hindi pa? Ba talagang, you know, akala ko napataot ka na siya pero pag nakikita ko sa kanya, kumukulo pa rin dugo ko. Yung bang ganun ba mga tanong? Okay. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness means the choice to renounce personal bitterness and release the offender from all moral obligation to you for the damage done to you by refusing to avenge yourself or demand recompense for the damage done. Are you here? Mahirap, ano? Mahirap? That's why forgiveness is not about what you feel. It's not a matter of emotion. It's a matter of choice. It's the choice. I renounce personal bitterness. Release the offender. Bahala ka na ang Diyos sa'yo. Okay? And I choose to move on in my life. I refuse to avenge myself kasi kung gaganti ako, baka hindi ko matapos yung labanan niya pag sinimulan ko ulit. You'll never have be in peace kung gaganti ka. In fact, kung gaganti ka, pati Diyos hindi matutuwa sa'yo. Okay? Do not avenge yourself or demand recompense. You trust God to do the recompense. That's forgiveness. Do you know why forgiveness is so hard? There are two things that makes it so hard to forgive. Number one is our deep sense of justice. Right? We want justice. Tama, attorney? Not justice, no? <laughs> justice, okay? Our deep sense of justice sometimes keeps us from really giving forgiveness because we demand eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We want compensation for the damage done to us. Right? Right? Okay? But listen to this. I think attorney can testify. A civil case can take 25 to 30 years. Right? Are you willing to spend a lot of money for 25 to 30 years uh, pursuing a civil case? Forgiveness is not the abolition of justice. Say that with me. Forgiveness is not the abolition of justice. Forgiveness doesn't mean that you throw justice out of the window. No. Forgiveness means entrusting the justice issued to God who promises to execute justice and repay you for the damage done to you. Okay? 
If you understand that when you forgive, you're actually transferring the case of justice from your hand to the hands of the great judge. And you know he will always judge justly. Okay? It doesn't mean that you're surrendering justice. No. When I forgive, I'm saying, Lord, I will no longer take justice in my hands. I will allow you now to execute justice for me so I can move on and live in peace. That's what forgiveness does to us. So forgiveness, I forgive you. I release you from all obligation to me because you will have your obligation before God anyway. Okay? Because I want to enjoy my life. You understand this? Forgiveness is commanded not for the benefit of the offender, but for the benefit of the offended. Can you say that with me? Forgiveness is commanded by God not for the benefit of the offender, kasi haharap pa sa Diyos yun, sa kasalanan na ginawa sa iyo. Haharap pa yun. Okay? But it's commanded for the benefit of the offended because God has called us to live in peace, not in pieces. You got that? Can you say to the person beside you, God wants you to live in peace, not in pieces. If you do not forgive, you choose to live in pieces. Do you understand that? Okay. So, trust God. Romans 12, 19 to 21. Okay. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's love. Bigyan nyo naman na trabaho ang Diyos. Amen? Expert siya sa paghihiganti. So, let him do the job. He will do a better job than you. Okay? It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Amen? So, wag ka nang gumanti. Ako nang bahala sa kanya. Ikaw, patawarin mo para mag-enjoy ka na ng buhay mo. Bakit ang papakahirap dahil sa kasalanan ng isa? Siya dapat ang manghirap noon, hindi ikaw. Ikaw ang nagpapakahirap eh. You understand that? Next, next verse. On the contrary, pag yung enemy mo, hungry pa kainin mo. Because hating your enemy will not enable you to live in peace. Do good to your enemy. Ipakita mo sa kanya, hindi kanya kayang gawing katulad niya. Kasi when you try to get even, you want to teach him a lesson, gagawin mo rin sa kanya, yung ginawa niya sa'yo, tama? Tama ba yun? Tama ba yun? Hindi. Ikaw yung natuto, natuto ng leksyon. Natuto ka maging kamukha niya. Hindi mo magbabago yun pag ginawa mo sa kanya, ginawa niya sa'yo. Hindi magbabago yun. Sanay na siya dun eh. Baka manhid na nga konsyensya nyo, kahit anumang eleksyon ituro mo, gagawin mo sa nga ginawa sa'yo. Hindi na sa tinatablan. Manhid na yon. Ikaw yung kawawa kasi ikaw nagbago. Naging kamukha ka niya. Nag-transform ka rin. <laughs> Understand that? So say this, don't get even. Come on, say it. Don't get even. Get over! And move on! Enjoy your life. Amen? Let God deal with the person, His way, His time. So, pakainin mo yung kaaway mo. Walang no hatred. Walang hatred. Ba? Pakainin mo kasi kakatayin ng Diyos yan eh. You know? Pakainin mo siya, pakainin mo. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on His head. Mas masusunog mo konsyensya niya, not by doing to Him what is doing to you, but by doing the opposite, mapapahiya siya sa'yo. Amen? Sinong gusto magsunog ng konsyensya? Pakitaan mo ng pagmamahal. Amen o ba? Kahit ang Diyos po, napakakind sa atin, kahit tayo nakakasala, why? What's the purpose of kindness? Romans 2.4 Why is God so kind to you kahit nakakasala ka? Because His kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. Romans 2.4 Okay? Not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. Kaya sabi ng Diyos sa'yo, Anak, pag ikaw nakakasala, nakakainsulto ka sa akin, I'm still kind to you. Kayong kaaway mo, maging kind ka sa kanya, ako bahala sa kanya. Just be kind. Do you understand this? That is what God expects us to do so we can live in peace kasi we don't harbor hatred or bitterness anymore against the person. We choose to renounce bitterness and let God do His job. And I'll move on and enjoy my life with God. Amen? So, it doesn't mean the removal of justice. Go back to our slide. It also means refusing to dwell on the memory of the offense committed never to bring up the matter again to the offender or to other people. When you say, I forgive, that means I am making a choice that even if I recall what, is done, what was done to me, I refuse to dwell on the memory and I refuse to talk about it with anyone 
I refuse to open that subject with anyone. And if somebody asks me, Pare, ano ba, Mari? Ano ba nangyari sa'yo? Ayoko na pag-usapan niya. Tapos sa akin niya, pinatawad ko na siya. Bahala na ang Diyos dyan. I'm going to move on. Pero gusto ko malaman. Sorry, I don't want to talk about it again. I'm closing the book. Okay? That is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a choice to put the memory of an offense behind you and you refuse to look back. That is forgiveness. Okay? Let me show you from Hebrews 10, 17, from God's own example, how does God forgive? He said, your sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. That's forgiveness. Hindi ibig sabihin ang Diyos nag-develop ng amnesia. Pag sinabi niya, I will remember sins no more, ibig sabihin naka-amnesia ang Diyos. Hindi niya pwede makalimutan niya kasi lahat nakikita niya, all-knowing ang Diyos eh. Pati yung gagawin mo bukas, alam niya rin eh. Hanggang sa mamatay ka, alam niya lahat yung gagawin mo kasalanan. Ano yung tindihan natin? It is not that he, is, he has forgotten it. He chooses not to dwell on it anymore. He chooses not to recall it. Okay? Sa so Micah 7, mas dramatic. Lord, thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Yan. Pag ang Diyos nagpatawad, kinukuha niya kasi tinatapon niya doon sa kalalim-laliman ng dagat. Tapos talaga niya ng karatula, no fishing. Yan hilig natin mag-fish yung tinapon na eh. Balik-balik tayo doon sa kasalan natin na confess mo na. Tapos tayo, tinapon na yung sa ilalim ng dagat. Huwag mo nang hanapin. Amen. Ganon ang Diyos pa nagpatawad. So when we forgive, we follow the model of God. Even if you recall the memory, nakita mo mukha niya, umaandar na maalala, you refuse to dwell on it. You just, God bless this person and move on to something else. It's refusing to dwell on the memory and focusing your mind on something more constructive. Do you understand this? It is a deliberate, intentional choice every time. That when you recall or somebody talks about it, you refuse to dwell on it. No more. I want to tell I forgive in this person. I bless him in the name of Jesus. I focus on something else. That is what forgiveness is all about. You understand what forgiveness is? It's always a deliberate choice. Every time the memory comes back, you refuse to entertain it. That is forgiveness. Do you understand that? And when you do that, the wound begins to heal. Kasi hindi mo na binalakbalikan yung cherish hurts mo. Hindi na sila cherish hurts. Yan ay forsaken hurts na. Okay? Pagkasabi sa inyong katabi, do not cherish the hurts. Throw them behind you and move on. Amen? Okay. So now you understand what it means to forgive. Why do we forgive? Next slide. Can we read this together? Bitterness is the opposite of forgiveness. Bitterness, can we read this together? Bitterness sharpens our eyes to the faults of another and causes us to prejudge everything that person does or says. Even the most well-meant actions of the person will be judged as ill-intended. True or false? Di ba? Pagkalik sa tao, wala siya nagawang tama eh. Lahat mali. Di ba? Wala siya nagawang mabuti sa'yo eh. Kasi galit ka eh. Okay? Nakukulayan tuloy yung iyong perception sa tao. Lahat na ginawa niya masama at mali. Lahat na ginawa niya suspicious ka. Okay? That's what bitterness. It, ang bitterness po, ginagawang pangit yung ating pananaw sa tao. Okay, another, next slide. Okay. Can we read this? Thus, bitterness makes us a slave of the other person for ill, filling our minds with every negative thought against him or her, keeping us from seeing the positive and the good, and thus deepening our misery and the darkness of our souls. Kaya every time nakikita mo yung taong yun, dumidilim ang mundo. Kasi wala kang maisip na positive eh. Kasi may bitterness ka. Doon ang gagaling yung negativity. Okay? Next slide. Can we read this together? Thus, bitterness wounds us more than the offense that triggered it. Do you agree? Your bitterness is hurting you more than the offense done to you. Because it's helping you live in pain and misery. Wounds us more than the offense that triggered it next. Bitterness is always a choice and so is forgiveness. Choosing to be bitter is choosing to be miserable. Choosing to forgive is choosing to live. Who wants to live? 
then make a choice to forgive. Get it behind you and don't look back. Okay? Let God deal with the justice issue. Next. Can we read this together? Forgiveness releases us more than the other person because hindi pa nakalaya sa Diyos yung taong nakasala sa'yo. Papa nagutin pa ng Diyos yun. You got the point? Ikaw na-release na, siya hindi. You got the point? Kasi nagpatawad ka, na-release ka na sa bitterness na nag-aalipin sa buhay mo. More than the other person, forgiveness restores light to our souls and delivers us from the hold of darkness and the devil. Forgiveness delivers us from the past and opens the way for us to move on and move forward. Do you agree? Wow, asarap mabuhay pag maroon na kang magpatawad. Eh. No? Next, ver next uh, slide. Can you read this again with me? Okay. Forgiveness empowers us to bless the offender and show grace as we have received grace. It opens heaven to us and leads us to higher ground. Wow. Okay. That's the power of forgiveness. Next slide. Our greatest source of suffering, can we read this together? Our greatest source of suffering are not our circumstances or people, but our negative thoughts about them. We may not be able to control our circumstances or what people do to us, but we are always able to control our thoughts about them. Do you understand that? Next slide. We can see them as obstacles or as opportunities to learn and grow. Is your mind, your attitude changing now about forgiveness? Forgiveness will set you free to enjoy peace and life. Let God deal with the justice issue. Move on and put it all behind you. Amen? So why forgiveness? Forgiveness is commanded not for the benefit of the offender, but for the benefit of the offended. God has called us to live in peace okay uh, can you show oh, i'll show that in a little while now what does the word of god teach about forgiveness number one forgiveness is a choice not a feeling can we say that forgiveness is a choice not a feeling kung maghihintay ka ng panahon that you will feel like you're ready to forgive by that time siguro patay ka na hindi mo na na-enjoy ang buhay Namuhay ka sa bitterness all your life kasi naghihintay ka ng feeling, feeling like forgiving. Eh, what if that never comes? You never enjoyed your life. You wasted your life on the offense of one person to you. Are you still here? So, enjoy life. Make a choice to change life. Next. Hebrews 10.17 Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. That's a choice that you have to make. Don't dwell on the memory. Put it behind you. It is a commitment that involves three promises. When you say, I forgive you, it means, I will not bring up the matter with you again. That's a closed book to me. Okay? Pakisabi sa katabi, no more rewinding of the past. With the person concerned. Huwag mong sasabihin, pang sampung beses mo na yung ginawa sa akin. Nako, binilang mo pa yung siyam. So, nakarecord lahat, may listahan ka. Eh, hindi forgiveness yun. Ang forgiveness, parang first time niya lang ginawa sa'yo kasi tinabi mo na yung nakaraan. Ganyan ang Diyos. Kahit He commands us, forgive up to 77 times because God practices that to us. He can forgive you up to 70 times 7 because He does not dwell on the past. You understand that? It is a number of perfection. That means there's no end to the forgiveness. Okay? And then, secondly, it's also a promise. Okay? I will not bring up the matter with others anymore. So the second promise you're making when you're forgiving, I will not bring up this matter with anyone. Wala nang yaw yaw, wala nang chika chika about what happened. Wala nang chismis. Amen? Pag sabi sa katabi, no more chismis. Tapos na yon. Close book. Okay? And thirdly, when you forgive, you're making a commitment, I will not dwell on the memory even if I remember it. Okay? Number two, forgiveness is a duty, not an option. Ah, ba, bahala akong patawarin ko yun di, ayoko kita patawarin. <laughs> Bakit po ito ay duty in na option? Okay, next. Jesus said in Mark 11, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father who is in heaven forgive you your sins. So what is Jesus saying? 
when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, hindi sinabi, if the person uh, repents or if the person admits he's wrong, if the person apologizes, hindi po yun ang sinabi. Ang sinabi, if you hold anything in your heart against the person, forgive. In other words, Jesus is saying, don't wait for the person to apologize. He may never do so. Okay? Don't wait for the person to admit he hurts you. He may never even come to that. Don't wait for the person, you know, to confess to you. That may never happen. So you will never be in peace. Jesus said, if you hold anything, forgive. That's the condition. If you have a grudge, forgive. Regardless of whether the person apologizes or not, whether they repent or not, that's not your business anymore. That's his business with God, ang just ng bahala sa kanya. Amen o ba? So wag mo hintayin na humingi ng tawad. Sabi ni Jesus, kumihin na nakit ka, magpatawad ka for your benefit so that your Father will also forgive you your sins. Do you understand that? In other words, God will not hear your prayer so long as your heart is bitter. Bitterness in the Bible is a sin and is offensive to God. God chose to be kind to you when He can destroy you because of your sinfulness. If God is kind and gracious to you, He expects you to do so to your fellow sinner. Kasi pareho lang naman kayo, eh. Nagkakasala. Do you understand that? See, the first thing that keeps us from forgiving people is our deep sense of justice. The second thing that keeps us from forgiving people is self-righteousness. Sometimes we forget. Marami rin tayong kasalanan. When we become self-righteous, it's so hard to forgive because we think tayo malinis, siya lang ang marami. You understand that? Okay? Galatians 6.1 says, When your brother is caught in a sin, you are spiritual, restore him gently, looking to yourself, lest you also be tempted. Pag nakasalis ang tao, ka maging condemning kasi baka ikaw bumagsak ka rin doon. Restore the person gently. Kung paano gusto mo na ikaw, pag nakasala, gusto mo rin, ma-restore ka gently. Gawin mo yon sa kapatid mo. Do you understand that? Gently watching yourself. Okay? So, if you do not forgive, next slide, God will not forgive us. Number three, and this is the most important point, slide 33, forgiveness comes to full circle when you choose to bless the offender. Okay? First Peter 3, 9, can we read this together? Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing. Because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing, right? We were called to be a blessed people. So God wants us to bless those who insult us, to bless those who do evil to us because kahit kailan, kahit anong gawin ng tao sa iyo, hindi ka talo kasi ang Diyos kapanig mo. Your God will always be with you. Amen? And your God is the source of all your blessings. Hindi yung taong yun. Hindi man siya nagbayad ng utang, maraming pwedeng ibigay sa iyo na higit pa doon sa utang na binigay mo, imagtitiwala ka lang sa Kanya. Kung ang Diyos na lang magbayad ng utang mo, mas okay kasi may interest. Dahil ang Diyos hindi nagpapatalo sa bigayan. Do you understand that? When you choose to give away something the person cannot pay, God will bless you. That's why the Word of God says, do not return evil with evil, insult with insult, but with blessing. Because by doing that, you are drawing more of God's blessings into your life. Are you still here? Are you still here? Pag-isabi sa iyo yung katabi, paramihan tayo ng blessing. Yan. Paramihan tayo ng tao na papakitaan natin ng blessing kahit sinasaktan tayo. Dadami blessing natin. Amen? That is where forgiveness comes to full circle because now you've settled in your heart. I'm not going to hold bitterness against you because I'm trusting God for justice. I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy the peace of God. I will move on and I'll bless you. Whenever I look back, God bless you. Amen? Okay. So, next verse, uh, next slide, we find this. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Imbis na magpakita ng kasungitan doon sa masungit, ang sabi, maging kind ka na lang sa kanya. Amen? Pag-isabi sa inyong katabi, pag lagi kang nakatingin sa pangit, alam mo naman kanyari sa iyo, no? Kaya kung gusto niya ng beauty tips, hanapin mo lagi maganda sa kapwa mo. Lagi kang maganda. Diba? 
Pag lagi mo nakikita yung maganda, lagi kang nakikita, lagi kang you know, encouraging, positive. Kasi nakikita mo, hinahanap mo yung magaganda sa kapwa mo eh. Pag hinahanap mo lagi yung pangit, talagang papangit ka. Amen. Sayang yung cosmetics, sayang yung beauty salon. Tapos nakasimangot ka rin pala. Sayang yung investment. Pag sabi sa ikatabi, sayang lahat ng investment natin pag nakasimangot na tayo. <laughs> Amen. So, focus on what you can see na maganda sa kapwa mo. Huwag mo hanapin yung pangit kasi nakakapangit talaga yon. Be kind kahit hindi siya kind sa'yo. Pakita mo sa kanya, hindi mo ko kayang ibaba sa level mo. I will be a woman of honor. I will honor you even when you offend me. Amen? That's what a woman of honor is. Okay? There you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Wag mo na lang pansinin. Para, you know, get over it. Okay? Don't meditate on the offense. Okay? Live in peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, but leave room for God's wrath. Amen. I'm going to stop right here. Okay? So, there are two things that you can do if you want to experience healing for damaged emotions. What's the first one? Faith. That God is in control, that God is bringing out something beautiful out of this. That God is humbling you at the moment. That if you humble yourself, in due time, He will lift you up. He will show you favor because you humbled yourself. And you ask God, Lord, what do you want to change in me? What lessons are you teaching me so I can be a better person? after this experience because I know that every painful experience you allow it to change me to qualify me for my destiny to qualify me for your great plans for my life and Lord I will not miss your purpose I will not miss my destiny baguhin mo ako amen and if you want God to heal you forgive I'm going to ask you right now if you know you there's people, there are people in your life you have not yet forgiven. Now you understand that forgiveness is not about emotions. It's about your choice. And when you choose to forgive tonight, you just allowed God to set you free. And He will deal with the justice issue regarding that person or those people concerned. Leave them to God. But God wants you to change your attitude towards them and show kindness to them and bless them because you know ang Diyos ang may hawak ng kaso mo. And that God will restore whatever the person has taken away from you. God will heal whatever damage he has done to you because you put your trust in God. He will say, I will repay. Ako magbabayad. Amen? Are you willing to trust God to deal with the justice issue? Are you willing to trust God to bring out something beautiful out of the ugly experience of your life? Are you willing also not only to forgive those people or that person, are you willing also to forgive yourself just as God forgives you? Can we come to the Lord in a word of prayer? Can we bow? I know that tonight some of you come here with still some pain in your heart. God brought you here tonight because He loved you. And He wants you to make the choice to forgive. And when you make that choice to forgive, remember you're making three promises. I will never again bring up this matter with a person. I will never bring up this matter to any other person. It's a close book. And if I remember, I will not entertain the memory. But focus on blessing the person in my heart. And choosing to move on. To live in peace. If you're making the choice tonight to forgive, I want all the heads to be bowed at this time. I'm saying, Lord, I'm making a choice tonight to forgive this person or these people who have brought damage to me. It may even be your parents. It could even be relatives or a teacher or some colleague your boss make a choice tonight Lord I release them in complete forgiveness from my heart and 
I thank you for your forgiveness of all my sins. Tonight I choose to forgive. And mention quietly in a whisper, mention the names of those people you're choosing to forgive tonight so that God can set you free. So that God can restore your dignity and your honor. Mention them by name, one by one. Those that you must forgive. Could include your parents, as I said. They've gone through a lot of verbal or emotional abuse. Forgive them. Most parents are the product of their own past. They may have experienced the same thing from their parents. And they did not know any better to change those ways. Parents are never perfect. But they're always trying their best for you. Honor them. And forgive them because they are not perfect. Mention the band by name as you forgive. It's a choice. And then after saying, I forgive, can you say, Lord, I ask you to bless this person. Because when you bless a person, you're opening heaven to reach out to that person, to change his heart, to touch his life. Release a blessing to each of those people that you have forgiven tonight. Ask God to bless them. Touch their lives. Because the moment you make that choice, you have come to full forgiveness. Bless them. And then from this day on, make a choice. You'll never talk about this ever again with anyone. Everything ends tonight. You're closing the book of your past. Because now you choose to move on. And experience what God has prepared for you. Choose to follow His will and plan for your life. Allow God to redirect you. Ask Him to show you His ways. Ask Him for wisdom. Because He's prepared to lead you to higher ground. He loves you so much. And He allowed these things because He is humbling you and preparing you for something bigger than yourself. He is the source of every good and perfect gift. And He has so much He wants to give to you. His favor will come to you in greater measures when you choose to forgive and humble yourself. Can you say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for setting me free as I release these people in forgiveness I receive your forgiveness for all my sins. I renounce my bitterness. I renounce all resentment or hatred in my life. And I choose to walk in love, to show kindness even to these people by your grace because you promised to bless me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I choose to put all of this behind me and I will not look back again as I put my trust in you to bring out something beautiful out of what happened. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you will vindicate me in your own time. I thank you for the lessons I'm learning Help me grow to be that person I was meant to be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give God the glory.